before me I have one of the largest collections I think we've ever seen here on World of Railways of Hornby Scaledale buildings and uh, infrastructure. Now the Scaledale range is completely cast in resin. These are painted items ready to plant on your diorama, your little scene or even a layout. And uh, well we haven't really featured them that much in the magazine. Uh, we do occasionally but it, it does limit itself a little bit uh, in terms of content because effectively they're painted, there's nothing that you need to do build wise uh, you can adapt them and we have featured quite a few modification articles to them in the past but at the same time modifying these buildings to make them unique while it is interesting does also a little bit defeat the object of the exercise effectively you're paying for a building which you don't need to modify and the range is so vast now that uh, and we are seeing additions to its new TT120 range which is also a welcome uh, site but the range is so vast that if there isn't an item in it by now well, you can sort of make do and mend with what there is. So I thought we'd take a look through the range now, starting with one that's caught my attention to the left there. Uh, it's low relief viaducts with lockups in red brick. I thought we'd just go through these on camera one at a time and sort of, so, well, effectively see what you get in the box because when you're at your local retailer, it is sometimes a bit difficult to uh, rummage through every box, open up the uh, the box and uh, and take a good look at every item. These are things that are on the shelves and uh, well if you have a look at it on this video you can always go down to your local retailer and uh, and pick one up later on can't you so uh, let's start with that and see what's what and there we go a set of three arches now you can see that the uh, the windows here above the lockups are uh, are actually painted black they don't offend the eye because uh, ultimately uh, it's not something you're going to study at close quarters uh, it's a substantial piece of resin this you can see we've got a sort of a reinforcing piece here which gives you enough of a base to um, to fix to your model potentially although theoretically this should be possible if, if you were if you were to drill a few holes in there uh, slightly undersized of course the, the correct diameter you'd have to work that out carefully and then you could tap a screw into the bottom that would really secure this into place if you weren't entirely sure as to what size you could drill the hole potentially there is enough thickness there for uh, for drilling the hole all the way through and then uh, fixing it to your layout with a small bolt the reason I say this is because if we get the, sc the scale of truth here, this is something that uh, all the review models for the magazine have to uh, have to sit on. Place that roughly in the centre. And we've got a value there of 765 grams. Now if I add the second one in place, you'll get an idea as to uh, the weight of these on a layout. So let's just place the second one in there. I think this will be quite similar. There you go, one, just over 1.4 kilos. So you can see there we've got a length, uh, 1.4 kilos. Uh, it's a substantial weight to add to your layout. Now bear in mind that uh, that gets you approximately, uh, I would say half a meter in length. I'll just need to check the box to, to verify. Um, but if you were to add this as a feature on a layout and you wanted them on both sides, for instance, then you're going to have to be careful on weight. The Scaledale range is heavy by its very nature. These are cast resin items, but this one in particular is quite heavy. So just bear that in mind. If you're to make your layout uh, something mobile that you want to be able to put into place or take down easily, then uh, just factor in the weight of these items. So there you go. That's a nice, nice relief on there. The bricks are highlighted. You can see we've got a, the, the mortars sort of picked out. Um, it looks clean. That's that's my uh, that is my first uh, initial assessment of that. Some of the Scaledale items are weathered. This is not one of those. So uh, you can see we've already got a few painting procedures going on. Door handles are all picked out. A um, little bit of a complex area to paint here with the uh, the more complex sort of garage door facade there. This one's been modernised. You've got some sort of uh, bifold uh, almost appearance going on. You get the idea. There's a bit of variety between the two. Um, so it doesn't look like a copy-paste item on your layout. Uh, but if you really wanted to sort of take them a step further, then check out some of our weathering items, uh, weathering articles rather, on World of Railways, uh, just, to, uh, just to add a little bit more realism to these items, if you like, and uh, some of the patina that you tend to see on these. Uh, next, we'll take a look at a rather dodgy-looking establishment. Here we go. It is Parker's News Agents. Phil, I hope you're watching this. A very... Uh, 
unscrupulous news agents, no doubt, uh, wheeling and dealing, ducking and diving. So we've got papers and stationery, uh, parkers again over the top of the door, and uh, we've got a little bit of an image there of the interior of a shop. So you get a bit of a 3D effect when you look through the window. Now uh, to the upstairs, we've got the detail of the, the windows. These are cut in plastic and uh, you've got some little frames which are uh, presumably painted around them. I don't think these are through. Oh no, I tell a lie. No, these are actually these are actually separate components with the glazing behind them. So there is a bit of a ridge there, which is which is a good uh, good good thing to see. Um, we don't have a floor upstairs. That is one of the common traits of a lot of scale Dale buildings. Uh, it's just due to the casting process of how these are uh, are fabricated. So if you want to start adding lighting inside your model buildings, that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, you will need to put some floors in just to add a little bit of realism and uh, you can see to the rear again this is the sort of living quarters of the shop and again a little bit of, uh, of detail going on there with the guttering drain pipes picked out in black um, little doorknobs things like that and a nice little stack of chimneys to the top so um, yeah you could you could add that to a, an end of terrace uh, little line up uh, well actually you've got you've got two bricked windows either side so this this being half relief um, I'm trying to work out why that would be because as built that would be a very thin extension to the rear there wouldn't it and you have got some ridge tiles so presumably this would be your end of terrace against your scenic side but if you wanted to expand or you had it as as so on the layout then I don't know how that would work really. I, I suspect you would need to put them back to back um, just to make sense really. Although they have decorated it so it gives you the option really on a layout. Um, I certainly wouldn't leave it like that exposed on your layout. I just think that ridge line looks a little bit uh, a little bit bizarre as it is. But uh, it, well, I could be wrong, it could work. It, I just don't think somebody would extend the back of a shop at 90 degrees with such a thin roof line like that. I think they'd probably continue it with a flat roof to make more sense rather than adding all these extra tiles. But um, I don't know, perhaps there's photographic evidence that could prove me wrong. Uh, if there is, then, um, well, send it across. Send it to uh, send it to us and uh, we'll, uh, I can be proven wrong then. So here we go. This is a Southeastern Railway designed, uh, or inspired at least, uh, signal box. Uh, so we've got the, the main building and you can see we've got an extension, a flat roof extension over the uh, like a little porchway there for the, uh, the uh, signalman to, uh, to enter. Um, and as, as with some of its other buildings, we've got a little bit of added detail here in the shape of the handrails. Now I did pick up on this on a previous release from the manufacturer with its uh, TT120 buildings uh, that the handrails weren't... Uh, I wouldn't say they wouldn't they were completely um uh out of out of shape but um they could have been a little bit better I felt. This one seems to I mean if you look at it from above yes there is a little bit of a ding there but that can be easily straightened but from this angle it looks absolutely fine. So this is a marked improvement on that previous one that I uh, that I reviewed. Um I'm actually quite intrigued as to how these are molded because for something that's cast in resin, I mean, you can see there's there's very little flash on the inside. Obviously, there is some sort of cleaning up process um, on the factory line because you can see the uh, the sort of drill marks where um, some of the window apertures have had to be widened and, and drilled out. But the stairs there, for instance, are uh, are actually quite fine for something that's cast in resin. Bear in mind, as a single piece, I presume a single piece, although that might be a that might be an addition. Actually, I tell a lie. You can see there's some inserts at the bottom there, so that is actually cast as a separate piece and then glued into position on the model. Um, and the guttering as well. You can actually see a little bit of daylight there behind some of the uh, some of the guttering downpipes from the roof. In terms of uh, shape. Um, I wouldn't say this is one of the mo more uh, ornate signal boxes that um, we've seen in the Scaledale range, the Southeastern Railway design here. Um, you haven't got any finials on the roof, and um, there isn't a little cutout there for your uh, for your uh, cranks to, to uh, appear out of. But nonetheless, this is something that would be very easy to detail on a project um, with a little um, 
uh, a little bit of, mecha of mechanism going on in there through the windows and perhaps a, uh, a signalman on the uh, on the little uh, veranda just to sort of uh, oversee the trains going past but uh, yeah nicely painted and uh, again there are opportunities for those that want to take these a step further but like I say from the box at the price point it's a ready to ready to plant building on your model now just in contrast to the retaining walls that we measured earlier let's just find out what this weighs so uh, I'll wait for that to zero there we go, 245 grams. So you can see here, it's uh, quite a bit lighter than that retaining wall. And uh, of course, you have other items to go in the range as well. They also do a Southeastern Railway station. Uh, and if you check out the uh, the website, you'll also find a Southeastern Railway footbridge. Just things that tie the range together. So you can have a, effectively a complete Southeastern Railway themed station. Uh, with all of the uh, paraphernalia that can go around it. There you go. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the uh, the footbridge next. Well, how's about this for a structure? So for the viewers that are still remaining uh, with me, thank you for, uh, for your patience. I hope I haven't bored you stiff uh, with my endless blather. But um, I think this is a this is a, a great opportunity to look through some of these uh, these items and structures because we're now looking at a footbridge. This again is the Southeastern Railway uh, inspired con well this would be a cast concrete uh, footbridge. Very minimalist, isn't it? It's sort of that uh, uh, era where uh, economy uh, structures are starting to come into place. This is a, a cast uh, structure, so we're probably looking around 1920s, 1930s, uh, 1940s-ish. Of course, many of these were had to be replaced upon electrification of lines, but um, some of them still stayed in, uh, in, in situ. So um, it's not uncommon to see this type of structure today on the railway uh, in certain locations. And um, I think this, this has been something like a three-part process. So we've got an overall shade of grey. We've then got these areas picked out in the darker grey around the feet and the, uh, the, the sort of the stairs. And, um, and then we've got a bit of a light weathering. I don't know how easily that can be seen on camera. We've got a bit of a dry brushing effect going on with what appears to be a slightly metallic silver. So it gives the illusion of concrete. Uh, certainly from this distance, um, and uh, if you want to weather it further, uh, of course concrete is, is one of those materials being quite porous that uh, tends to stain very, very easily. And uh, the railway being quite a dirty environment, well, you can imagine that this footbridge with uh, the smoke from uh, uh, whether it be diesels or uh, in previous years steam, uh, as this would have been installed, uh, it's going to weather very, very quickly. But I like the detail, we've got sort of the... Uh, a little bit of drill hole going on here whether that is i don't think that's structural for this model i think that's just detail that's been added so uh, that's quite nice to see and uh, this appears to be a one part cast piece i don't see any joins on it so um for strength on the layout this is uh, yeah this is quite good let's just see how level it is it sits very well it sits very well on the table i can't can't see any wobbling which is uh, which is a good thing I mean, this table is quite ancient as well, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take it for as, as gospel as being um, completely flat. But you get the idea. Um, something like a multi-part adhesive under those, um, under those two uh, risers there would see this secure to your layout uh, very well. Personally, I would again resort to fixing this with some screws because if this board is turned through 90 degrees and uh, for storage or whatever purpose. This is, this is again one of these weighty structures where uh, you might break the, the glue join. And of course, being resin, it is also quite fragile if not handled uh, quite carefully. So to avoid any uh, little surprises, just make sure these are securely fixed in place to your layout. Um, I think it's time we went to a pub, don't you? Let's take a look at the next structure. So at 626 grams, this is the Rose and Crown pub, or to the Hornby aficionados, it's an R7359. There you go. Now, these are, um, again, one of the more sizable structures in the Scaledale range, and uh, it's obviously got a bit of weight to it. Um, I mean, it's a pub, isn't it? So effectively, you'd want some little tables around the doors there um, if you start to add lights again. It's entirely your layout, your project, your diorama, whatever it is you're making with these. 
So um, just be wary of sometimes not having any light and not seeing things works out a lot more wallet friendly in the long run. Um, now to the outside, again, we've got the same uh, multi-layered uh, approach to the painting techniques. Um, nicely picked out guttering, uh, the ridge tiles again, and this one has a few additions of some signage. These appear to be um, transfers applied to the model rather than the sort of uh, tampo printed effects that we tend to see on ready-to-run items of like locomotives and rolling stock. Uh, but nonetheless, it's all legible, it's crisp, crisp it's clear, um, and I dare say it's very, very clean compared to many of the pubs uh, around our neck of the woods in Lincolnshire. Um, but uh, still, it's a nicely presented building, and of course you've got the detailed rear to it as well. So uh, you've got options on a model. And of course, speaking of options, we did speak earlier of the uh, uh, the news agents and that uh, obscure wall to the back of it. Well, it kind of all makes sense now because this is effectively a bit of a modular system. So you can expand your uh, your street scene accordingly by inserting uh, different buildings between um, each other and effectively you've got yourself, before you know it, a little bit of a, a road with buildings alongside it. So uh, let's take a look at another one which would fit into this range in the shape of a family grocer. So this is the uh, family grocer from George Althorpe and Son, as the box says, or uh, R7360. And uh, well, if there's ever inspiration for creating a street scene, this box has to provide it. Uh, you can see not only have we got the building, which is uh, obviously what you get in the box, but we've also got all the things that you would traditionally see outside a grocer, which give you ideas for detailing your layout. Uh, now, a lot of these accessories are widely available from aftermarket uh, suppliers, but there are also many that are also available from some of the Scaledale range as well. So take a look at the full Scaledale range. You can also uh, detail the outside of what would effectively be your shop from that. And uh, of course, if this is something that you would have on a modern layout, then you can look to everything else that would be required uh, in the modern street scene on a grocery shop like this. For example, CCTV cameras, you would have uh, different signs for the payment methods inside, uh, you'd want different points of display around the thing in the windows, and of course things like satellite dishes, um, I don't know, uh, aerials on the roof for TVs, things like that, uh, that you, you tend to find on, on buildings of this era today. Um, effectively, a nice little corner shop with um, a bit of a bit of an inspiration there almost from uh, Arkwright's corner shop that uh, was made famous in open all hours. Uh, so you fit it against the pub like that, that gives you an idea of what you can achieve with the two side by side. So roof line is a very close match and um, you've got the option there to then continue your street scene around a corner at 90 degrees and continue it further on with this modular setup. So we could for instance place that Parker's news agents next to it like that and then of course you've got to return there back onto uh, onto another street so okay it kind of makes more sense in my head now as to uh, as to where this is kind of going with this range so uh, if we just put that to one side and we put the pub to one side and take a look at this building now we've got um a, again, a printed format for the internals with a bit of a fresh fruit aisle going on there inside this uh, this grocery shop. And then to the side, we've got more of the uh, sort of a bottle, wine bottle kind of section. A little bit of plastic packaging going on there, which is obviously something that's representative of uh, the news agents of today. Um, inside, we've got that piece of card that's sort of uh, glued inside around the aperture there of the windows and it uh, just gives you that bit of extra detail. But um, as you've come to see from the rest of the range, see things like that, a little alleyway. So for example, to the rear of it, you can have some little wheelie bins or something if it was depicting the present day. If it's depicting something like the 60s, then you would have, uh, I don't know, a little steel dustbin or something like that um, outside for the, uh, for the waste. There you go. That's another great addition to the range. This one is R7360, just in case I didn't mention it. Uh, but if you just type into George, George Althorpe and Son Family Grocer into the Hornby website, that will give you an idea um, on pricing. Obviously pricing does fluctuate, so I tend to avoid adding things like that in this video. 
um, and obviously with retailers as well it will fluctuate so check out the latest uh, latest prices the rrps with your retailers on these products i think now it's time to take a look at some of these retaining walls though so this is a clever modular system which um, effectively gives you a retaining wall as the boxes all say um, to add to your layout now we've got different heights so we've got the high level ones you can then step it down with one of these to the mid level and then you can have a low level as well these are the blue brick blue engineering brick variants we've also got a red brick variant as well now uh, one of the things that i love about this is that uh, if we just take one out here here we go this is a good this is it gives you a, a good idea of the range so there you go you can step it down accordingly so this is the type of thing <clears throat> engineers wouldn't build these just for the sake of building them so it means that uh, the ground usually behind it wasn't um, wasn't capable of uh, of holding back the terrain so perhaps there was um, uh, you know less dense less dense material soil clay something like that which is subject to heave and this sort of thing is built to uh, sort of retain whatever there is behind it obviously it's a costly method uh, of fitting this to uh, to a um, uh, a railway when they were built originally uh, if if they could blast through the rock and the, the rock was quite capable of uh, supporting itself then more often than not that rock would be left as it was but uh, this is the sort of thing that you'd find um, on run-ups to uh, to sort of uh, dug out excavations of, uh, of track and quite often you could see uh, bridges going across these to uh, to cross the uh, the culvert if you like which have been dug out um, to uh, to transport road traffic or uh, whatever there was farm traffic perhaps which had been disturbed by the arrival of the railway so uh, farmers crossings things like that so let's take a look at what we've got inside this one so this is R7375 this is the high level variant and uh, of course inside each of these you get two so it's not just one set of arches so it does give you a little bit of distance on a uh, on a model and there you go so i would say with these being the step down ones um, perhaps two in a pack is perhaps a little bit generous because more often than not stepping them down you're only going to really need one uh, unless of course you've got some uh, mammoth layout that you are building somewhere in which case we'd love to see photographs of how you use them and um, these make sense i think more having them two to a pack uh, just because they are high level so you've got uh, uh, more of an opportunity and I think more these would be more commonplace if that makes sense on a layout at the high level whereas when you step down more often than not you're only going to need to step down the once aren't you I think I mean sure make it make it available as a, as a single item and if somebody wants to uh, wants to buy two then they can do but um, I think here you might be buying two and only using one I don't know maybe I'm wrong if so, please prove me wrong with your project. Um, the rest all makes sense though. So this is the uh, the high level arched retaining walls um, in the blue brick. So again, you would see this, but it's high level. You get the idea. I'm not gonna take all of these out of the boxes, um, but it's safe to say that there's plenty of detail on them. And again, these are actually quite lightweight. So that's quite welcome to see. Actually, detailed both sides. So you could effectively flip it round and have one going up and one coming down effectively if you wanted you could have one either side and have your railway through a cutting i guess that could work as well there we go that's a look at hornby's scaledale range of buildings there are more coming out uh, for 2023 which we're expecting for review soon i hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, well stay in tune with uh, world of railways and we'll be reviewing more of these as they come